Okay, so let's look at what are called zero knowledge proofs. So many of the zero knowledge proofs that we have use the Fiat Shamir heuristic as a foundation, and it's still a well used method and can be used to build uh, new types of systems. So the existing system that we have for storing uh, uh, shared secrets is typically flawed. And the reason it's flawed is because uh, uh, Peggy, in this case, is the prover and Victor is the verifier, sends her password over the network. And then that password is then ha uh, added to some salt and then created as a hashed value. The salt is stored beside the hash value. When Peggy logs in, her password is sent over the network and then Victor must take her password and add on the salt and see if he can get the same hash value. This is flawed because Peggy must send her password over the network. Someone could be listening or a process could snoop her password here. Also, an intruder could take the salt and the hash value offline and then use a cracker to be able to search through a dictionary of words and add the salt and get the same hash value. Once they have that, then they have Peggy's password. Along with this, they might use brute force to be able to randomly or to be able to create any type of password and add the salt on and find the hash value. So this is a problem that we have just now. And with GPUs now, with more than 4,000 processing elements, and with cloud crackers that can build whole arrays of GPUs, we have a major problem here in keeping up with the processing of it. So we need to move away from a method where we give away all of our information, our date of birth, uh, our passwords, our user IDs and so on, our addresses, our bank codes, our PIN numbers and so on, and move much more towards a world where we know something and we prove to Victor that we know it. So a lot of the methods are based on this uh, paper, which is written by Amos Fiat and Adi Shamir. Shamir is the S in RSA and has, is the foundation for many amazing methods in cryptography. And the way it works is that we have some information that we want to keep secret. Peggy will then register a value with Victor and that will identify the seed of uh, Peggy's password in this case. We will normally use a strong registration process to make sure that the seed of the value is well defined, such as uh, using multi-factor authentication. When Peggy wants to reset her, her password, she will then go through the same process again with multi-factor authentication and generate our new seed. By looking at the seed value, it shouldn't be possible for Eve to come in and look at the value and determine the password. The puzzle is just too difficult. And the same for Victor. Victor can't actually tell what Peggy's password is. Then, when Peggy wants to log in, Victor sends a challenge. It then becomes fairly easy for uh, Peggy to produce the response to the challenge. She sends it back, Victor checks it, and it's okay. It is far too difficult for Eve to be able to generate this, the correct response, even although the Eve can see these values. So the Fiat Shamir heuristic is also defined as non-interactive random oracle access. We have several random oracles that we use and it's not possible for an intruder to be able to guess uh, Peggy's password from these values. So initially she creates her password and then creates a hash of the password. So this password, uh, what we can do so she takes a hash of it and creates a value, an integer value. We can do this in Python with this, take an MD5 hash and convert it to an integer. All along, we take what's called the mod, 
mod P or mod N in this case uh, operation. So these operations here can grow very large. So we can train that by having the mod P operation, which is a prime number, or N is a prime number here. So both Peggy and Victor agree on a large prime number, and they also agree on a G value that they're going to use. Then, uh, to register our password, Peggy calculates Y is equal to G to the power of X. G to the power of X. And so generates, she generates g to the power of x, which is the y value here. She then passes that value to Victor, and then that becomes the registration value for her password. It is too difficult to actually determine the value of x, even though we have g to the power of x, because we also have the mod n operation. When Peggy wants to log in, she, she takes a random value v, and then generates g to the power of v and sends that over, and obviously mod n, to Victor. Victor then takes another random value and sends over c, which is the challenge. She computes r is equal to v minus cx. Only she knows v and only she knows x. So it won't be possible for Eve to be able to calculate the right value of r to come back. She sends r back again and then Victor calculates g to the power of r and y to the power of c. If this value equals the value that was sent over, then everything is okay. The reason that works is that uh, g to the power of r is g to the power of v minus cx, and y to the power of c is g to the power of x to the power of c. The way that logs work is that g to the power of x to the power of c is g to the power of xc. So then, now when we multiply with the same base, it becomes an addition. So it's g minus cx plus cx, and we end up with gv. So only uh, Peggy would be able to generate the right value of r to be for this to actually uh, work. So here's some code here. There's the prime number, the g value. That's us calculating the y, the p. We're using pow now here. Uh, so for the other one, this is the longhand form. It can, it can be quite costly in CPU if we use this type of form. So there is a more optimized form in Python, which is uh, this uh, method here, which is g to the power of x mod n. So we calculate T, R, and then we get the right value. We get the values back, multiply them as we have here, and check that they're equal to T. So here's an example here. We go through, hello, there's the prime number, the G value, and the secret based on the passwords, and then the challenges and responses, the two values, and we end up with the same one. But the problem that we have is that this value could be negative because c times x could be greater than v. If that happens, then this won't work because it's 1 divided by something to the power of something, which is going to give us a floating point, which will break our integers. So the way that we do this is to be able to use the inverse mod of a value. So in this case, if the value is less than 0, we take the inverse mod of g to the power of r mod n. And this is done through a method called uh, extended Euclidean. And this way we can actually find the inverse of the value of g here to the power of minus r. And it will work. So now we have a negative value here and it still works here. Okay, so let's look at this as an example. So you can see here, there's the value, it's a password, and we'll take our value there. We can select any prime number, and it should always work. Okay, we're looking here to see the same numbers. And sometimes you might see that the G value will change. So there's a generator of two. So this one has a generator of 11. 
there. So the generator is based on the prime number and uh, I'll show you how to do that in a little minute. But we can change the, the challenge and it should work. So this is what Victor sends. And it should all work like that. Okay, so that shows the, the basic method that we have. So finally, we need to pick a value of G that will make it work. Not all values of G work. Uh, so you can look at another lecture to be able to see what the problem is. But uh, this is the little method here that allows us to pick a value of G for the prime number that we select. If we select that correctly, then we'll be able to generate a value for G that will work for both Peggy and Victor. Okay, so that's been a brief overview of the Fiat Shamir heuristic. Thank you.